Alrighty, guys, our next speaker is Megan Springer. She is a campus coordinator from Nova Southeastern University. Come on, Megan. Like a small boat on the ocean, sending big waves into motion. Like I was saying. Hey, ladies. My name is Megan Springer, and I'm a campus coordinator, as she said, with Turning Point USA at Nova Southeastern University. I'm here to share my story with y'all. My story is this about sexual assault and how I have grown through this experience. So if you feel like you may not be able to handle listening, I do encourage you to go grab a snack and you can meet with me after the general session. I grew up in a small town in Indiana. I had a 10 p.m. curfew and I was definitely not allowed to go to any parties. I grew up pretty sheltered and being a pastor's daughter didn't really help that. I decided to go to a college 1,500 miles away from home at a private university in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The first week of school, I realized just how much of this newfound freedom I truly did have. I stayed out every night until the sun was coming up, trying to make new friends and solidify who I was going to be in this new chapter of my life. You know those days that are just magical, like everything that had been going right or wrong lately just seemed to fall into perfect place? and there's absolutely nothing that can bring you down. Well, February 11th started out like that just for me. I was actually at Community Fest, a festival my university puts on to bring the community together. So I had been busy making children into superheroes all day and having the time of my life. I don't necessarily love children, but their giggles are contagious. You can just picture the, ra the happiness radiating from this day, right? The yellow. When I think of February 11th, I think of yellow. Yellow is one of the most positive and bright colors. And now I haven't worn yellow in a year. On February 11th, 2017, I was raped. I won't get into the details because being honest, it is too hard for me to go into full depth of this night. I can tell you this. I went out with friends that night and because I grew up thinking that the world is amazing and no one is out to hurt you, I was taken advantage of by a man that I'd never met. After it happened, I spent 12 hours in the hospital and in the women's center. My mother and my father got on the first flight that they could to get to me, and for the first few days, I slept for hours. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't talk to my mom, to my dad, or to my friends. I just laid in bed and wished that I was dead. For months, I blamed anything that went wrong in my life on my anxiety, my depression, the PTSD, a mixture of all three. I didn't go to my classes for six weeks, and I didn't leave my dorm room for two weeks. It took my sorority sisters to get me to leave to get food. I struggled for months to cope. I went to therapist after therapist, never truly finding one that I could open up to. My friends saw that I was hurting, but they didn't know how they could help. No one knew how they could help. They didn't know how to help me because I shielded myself away from them, and I guarded myself. I made myself feel alone, and I pushed everyone who loved me away. Each therapist told me that would be hard, and with that, I, I believed them. They all tried different ways to get me to connect with them, but nothing worked. Nothing until June. In June of last year, I went to YWLS, where I met so many survivors, including Kimberly Corbin. I couldn't make it through Kimberly's speech, and so I ran out of this very room to the bathroom over there, where I met 10 other young women who were going through the same pain that I was. To those women and to the staff that were in the bathroom who wiped my tears, made me laugh, and showed me that I was not alone, thank you. These empowered and strong women showed me that there was a light at the end of the tunnel. They showed me compassion, love, and proved to me that I was stronger than I could ever imagine. It was hard. I'm not a special case. I'm a regular person with an all-too-common story that some of you in this audience may have even experienced. There are days that suck. There are days that I don't want to get out of bed or talk to anyone. But there are also days and these happen more often than not, that the sun is shining and the world is my oyster. February 11th was a day that I became something I'd never felt before, a victim, but also a survivor. I still get flashbacks, I still get bad dreams, and I still get an overwhelming sense of fear and anxiety going anywhere alone. 
I had people telling me that I deserved it, that maybe it wouldn't have happened if I wasn't so pretty, and maybe I should have worn a more conservative outfit that night. And for the longest time, like most survivors of rape feel, I believed them. I let society infest every thought, and for the past 18 months, I have been cautious with every man I interacted with, with every outfit I wore, and with everything that I said. I haven't worn yellow in 18 months. I haven't drove near Pompano Beach or hung out with that group of friends. There are many things that I cannot do because of what he did to me. But I realized that I could use what happened to me to impact and empower young women just like yourselves, that I could make a difference in someone's life. I believe that my sexual assault didn't happen to me, but for me. It happened for me to change my major to legal studies so that I can help empower young women who are going through the same pain that I am. It happened for me so that I would dedicate the rest of my life to sharing my message and to this cause. It happened for me, for me to say on this stage that I refuse to be called a victim of rape. I refuse to let what he did to me define me for the rest of my life. I refuse to let hatred and negativity become a part of my life. I re I realize that my journey is just beginning, but I draw strength from all of you. You are empowered. You are strong. You are capable of anything you set your mind to. Don't tear each other down just because your stories may not be the same. Sorry. As women, we need to unite. We need to empower each other and lift each other up for the successes that we make, no matter how big or how small. I'm not standing up here to say, woe is me, or to make you feel sorry for me. I'm here to show each and every one of you that you can thrive in darkness. I hope you can take what I have shared and use it for good. To the survivors in the room, know you're not alone. There is a light at the end of this tunnel, and even though it may seem far away, just keep pushing. No matter the size of your strides, you are still making progress. Never forget that empowered women empower women. Thank you. All right. Wow. Wow, thank you. Please welcome Fox News contributor and the woman who made me fall in love with politics, Tommy Laren. <laughs> Shake, 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 shake,